Hey survivors, how's it going? I'm Virtual Paradise, and today I'm going to share 10 hidden base locations on the main Fjorda map known as Midgard, and I'll be making separate videos for each of the Fjorda maps. All of these work on official, so with all that dilly dally out of the way, let's get into the video. Alright, so this first location is around 18.4 by 92, and it's around the northeast of the map, around here. And it's just behind this waterfall next to the bridge. And we have quite a lot of room for building in here. A lot of headroom as well for multiple levels. And because it curves around to the entrance, you can kind of strategically place some turret walls, etc. There's a lot of building resources around the area as well, easily accessible to the cave entrance. So for a starter base or a small tribe base, I think this could be quite a good location. Plus you've got a lot of room for breeding and all your crafting equipment. Quick cave damage test. Yep, cave damage. Alright, so that was the first location. Let's move over to location number two. Alright, so the second location's around 71.3 by 4.3, around here on the map, around the southwest. And it's just down in this little mine shaft, I want to call it, even though it doesn't really lead down into a proper mine, but it is like a little mine shaft entrance. So there's quite a lot of room to actually build in here. Because of the headroom, you can actually breed some dinosaurs quite easily in here as well, which is pretty good. And the entrance is pretty recognisable, so you'll want to have it defended with something. The entrance is a little bit too narrow for square foundations, but it's practically perfect for triangle foundations if you just set them up angled like this. And as you can see, it reaches wall to wall. So then you can just door that off and have turrets and whatever you want. Right, quick cave damage test. Yep, regular 6x cave damage. So not a bad little location if the area is quiet especially, but it's a little bit hard to defend. So let's move on to location number three. All right, so this next location's around 82.9 by 21.3, around here on the map. There's actually two uh, entrances to this cave. The second one is at 86.2 by around five, around here on the map. So you just follow the cave down on either entrance and scattered around the places like these little rooms, these doorways to empty rooms. You've got these thin ones here that you can deck out with triangle foundations because they're not quite wide enough for square foundations. And then you can basically just block these doors off with double doors or something like that. And there's also bigger rooms like these with two door entrances where you can fit a lot more foundations in. So you could get a proper little base going in here and because of the headroom to the ceiling, you could potentially put electrical outlets going up towards the rocks and then you could just put turrets along the rocks and the turrets should reach the electrical outlets. And then it's up to you if you wanted to expand your defences more and keep this a more permanent base or not. So if you're curious, here's the coordinates to these exact rooms, but there's lots around, so have a little scout. Now let's move on to the next location. Alright, so this next location is on the southwest island around here on the map at around 76.5 by 37.0 and you're basically looking for these two waterfalls with the big statue in the middle. And on the second level, either side of the statue, there's an entrance to a cave behind. You've got quite a bit of room to build some defences to cover both of the entrances but that statue being in the middle does add some blind spot problems but the cave itself extends back quite far and has quite a lot of headroom so you've got enough room here for quite a decent sized base and a lot of breeding as well you can breed some large dinosaurs in here and have multiple death walls if you wanted right let's check for cave damage yep cave damage so 6x damage in here all right well that was spot number four now let's head over to spot number five this next spot can be found at around 25.0 by 93.0 and it's around here on the map at the top northeast. You basically want to look for this cliff that kind of goes down into the water and then right on the top there's just a little cave entrance and I guess I'll call it the beetle cave because all you find in there is a few dung beetles and as you can see you can just get through there stood up yourself so you can't get any large dinos in that entrance. And then you've got a good little bit of building room for a bit of a starter base. 
or a solo base. And because the cave entrance is quite tucked away and hidden, I think most people won't see it when they fly past. Alright, does this cave register cave damage? Yep, unfortunately this cave has cave damage as well. <laughs> so that was the Beetle Cave. Not a bad little startup solo spot especially. Now let's head over to the next base location. So this next location is around 37.8 by 75.0, around here on the map towards the northeast. So you're basically looking for these sets of waterfalls, and it's the two waterfalls that are overlapping at different levels. And when you enter in the waterfall on the left, you're basically entering a bat cave, where they will normally spawn between about 5 and 10 Desmodus Draculae, the new bats. So you'll have to build quite a bit to stop them from respawning, as with my little one by one, uh, they keep respawning every time I come back to this bed at the moment. But you have a good bit of room to build in this cave. If you wanted to use the bat spawns like for cover somehow, you could make a little base like this or something and just hide it towards the back here. And then when the bats are still in here, when somebody comes in here, they might just think the cave is empty. But if you wanted to build out, there's a good bit of room for building and plenty of room for death walls, breeding, anything you want. Right, quick cave damage test again. Damn, cave damage. Knew it. So that was the Bat Cave. Not a bad little location. Now let's head over to the next base location. So towards the top northwest of the map, at around 22.8 by 19.3, you basically find this bridge attached to the remnants of a castle. And then at the other side of the bridge, there's an entrance going into a cliff face, which also exits out on the other side. And in the middle of the corridor, there's a door and a stairwell that goes down to another door with just a room. And this is it just basically a massive room so you've got plenty of space in here for everything really and then you could build defenses all the way up the stairs if you wanted and cover these corridors if you're a larger tribe but there's a lot of possibilities with this base you could try and stay hidden away or expand but there's lots of options for building and breeding with this room right quick cave damage test yep 6x damage down in the room let's try it up the steps and out the room a bit more. Yep, cave damage there. Yep, cave damage there. No cave damage outside the door. Let's just try the other side quickly as well. And yes, no cave damage outside that door either. So that was the mountain castle. Now let's head over to the next location. Okay, so this next location is around 28.5 by 34.0, around here on the map, towards the northwest. And as you can already see, we do get the occasional blizzards here, so it is quite cold in this region. And it's basically just up on this cliff and there's an opening into a cave. So there's only one way in on foot, which is around the cliff and upwards. But when you go down into the cave, as you can see from my HUD, it drops down to about 10 or 11 degrees Celsius I normally see it drop down to. And this location is probably more ideal for medium to large size tribes, unless you're on a quiet server. But there's an awesome little snowman buddy keeping you company. And you've got loads of room to build in this cave. There's plenty of room for breeding. You can have a size all base, multiple death walls. And because it goes out onto a ledge and there's only the one footpath in, then it's going to be quite easy to defend for a good sized tribe. And the path opens out to the landscape of plenty of building materials. So you can set up camp here and just get straight building really quickly. But this cave also might be quite highly contested. Let's do our usual cave damage test. Yep, cave damage. So you're going to get your regular 6x cave damage in this cave. Let's just try out here under the ledge. Yep, cave damage there under the ledge. And no cave damage there right on the edge. And no cave damage there either, a couple of meters in from the edge. 
so you can set up quite a few defences at the front that won't be susceptible to cave damage. So that was the ice cave, now let's head over to the next base location. Alright, so this next location is around 45.5 and 60.4, around here on the map towards the centre. And you're basically looking for this huge stair set that goes up to a cave door. And this cave is basically like a Hall of Remembrance or Trophy Hall or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what its purpose was, but it's pretty awesome to have as a base location. Plus, quite tucked away and easy to defend as well. But you've got these trophies and all these credits on the wall over here at the back. So that's quite awesome to look at. But then you've got absolutely tons of room to build and natural light sources down here as well. There's another room off to the side as well with more plaques and things in that you could just utilize in whatever way you wanted. You can make it another breeding room, crafting room. And a big plus as well is this place even comes with its own water source right in the middle. And that's a big plus having a water source in a cave type of base. So let's do our cave damage test. Yep, cave damage. And we're right by the entrance at the moment, so Let's place them on the steps. Cave damage there. Cave damage there. Wow, that's a good few meters outside the door. Cave damage there. Wow. Cave damage all the way down here still. That's crazy. Let's just put a foundation down on this bit. Yeah, no cave damage down this far. So it looks like any defences that you're going to have around the entrance of this cave are going to be susceptible to 6x cave damage, so that's a bit unfortunate. So that was the Hall of Remembrance location. Now let's head over to the final base location. Alright, so this last location is around 90.9 and 78.2. It's around here on the map on the deadly southeast island and it's basically in an artifact cave. So you want to find this cave entrance and just go straight down and it's only a straight corridor down. It doesn't wind around or go into any crazy normal arc like cave. And then when you get to the bottom of this corridor, obviously there's a lot of high level enemies you might need to clear first, unless you can just get down here quickly somehow. But then the artifact is on the end of this platform so if on your server no one is built in here or at the entrance then you could potentially put a cliff platform underneath this bridge above the lava and then make your base up here and you may be able to stay hidden for quite a long time if somebody does find you as well it's going to be quite a hard location to get a good spot to raid plus they're going to have to clear a bunch of enemies down the entrance on their way in cave damage test Yep, as expected, cave damage. This is an artifact cave anyway, so I thought that would be obvious. So I know this last location is a little bit dodgy and hard to build, but I've built in more awkward places myself, so you never know, you might actually like the idea. Alright survivors, so that was 10 hidden base locations on the main Fjorda map Midgard. I hope you found this useful and there was at least one location to suit your space requirements and needs. Well, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye for now. Peace.